This program is brought to you by UCKG. In the search for better chemical treatments to treat dependency, scientists from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, in the USA, are dedicated to developing procedures to identify and study small groups of neurons which are related to the craving of drugs. The study takes into consideration that associations trigger desire in the dependent to take drugs. When the dependent comes across something that reminds him about the drug, this small group of neurons is activated. Simultaneously, the memory of the drug is triggered and the person feels an uncontrollable desire for the drug. This results in the addict being unable to control his behavior and causing those who have been abstinent to relapse. Even though they are aware of the negative consequences which may include losing their job or family as well as health problems, says one of the scientists. They even add that today there is not a single effective medicine to cure addiction. That is why 70% of cocaine users relapse during a period of abstinence. Now when it comes to alcohol, the number is higher. 80% of alcohol users relapse. Carrie Fisher said she had relapsed one month before her death in December 2016. At 60 years old, she suffered a heart attack. One of the American actress's friends told the media that she was very unsettled and she had been fighting a battle against alcohol abuse and LSD for many years. She was also receiving treatment for bipolar disorder, depression, and anxiety. For many, the process for the cure of a chemical or behavioral dependency includes ups and downs. Some health professionals see the relapses as normal. Is it normal to go back and forth with the same problem? A legal drug that is easily accessible with devastating power. Cigarettes were synonymous with glamour, status and popularity. Smoking used to be so widespread that it would not be taken by surprise by the number of people who were smoking. But this symbol of sophistication and success has turned to ashes. In South Africa, advertising cigarettes on domestic TV and radio, newspapers and magazines has been banned and smoking in all indoor workplaces, public places, government facilities and other areas is not permitted. There are restricted areas throughout the countries, but the laws do not cure smoking. For those who would like to get rid of their cigarettes, the question is how? What can be done to erase nicotine dependency? There are nearly 1 billion smokers on earth. The habit kills over 8 million every year. According to cancer research, smoking causes 50 different sicknesses, including heart attacks and lung cancer. Every hour, 23 people die as a result of smoking. Specialists say that some types of food like lettuce, tomatoes and papaya help to decrease the desire to smoke. The battle against tobacco is a battle to regain health. Tobacco causes dependency. It is considered to be an illness because nicotine is a dangerous and highly addictive chemical that transforms body functions. Hello everyone, here we are once again with our last hit program. And always thinking on those who are suffering or they have a family member going through an addiction problem. Addictions, they have been a huge problem in our society nowadays. The addictions are compromising one's health, are compromising the financial condition, the family condition, the relationships these people, they are going through. The addictions are destroying people emotionally and even their health. And we know, we all know and we are familiar with at least with one person that unfortunately had succumbed to an addiction. And today 
they have their lives completely destroyed. And you know, it's very sad because we look at this person and we know this person has all conditions to progress, has all conditions to move forward, to, to be someone in life. But because of what they are going through, because of these drugs, because of this addiction, things are not going well and the person is not able to develop the, his own conditions or his own qualities, is not able to invest in his own future. And you may look at me now and you are that person. You see your family falling apart. You see your financial life going away. You see that today you are completely different that one day you could be or one day you desire to be. You look at yourself and you see your life completely destroyed because of this addiction. You look around you and even those who you love are being destroyed because of this addiction. Pay close attention to, pay close attention to what Carlotta is going to share with you. Pay attention to what she was going through and those who were around her also went through. And I'll be back to talk to you. When we came to New York, after we married, uh, he started using drugs. He started being friends with bad people, drinking um, almost every day. So he, he, he worked one, one job and he was fired. He got another job and, you know, but he used to spend her whole, all the money we didn't have money for anything. So I wanted to start working. And I, he got me into drugs. So we were like, the house was a mess. I didn't want to do anything, you know, using drugs with him every night. Crack cocaine. We let the children go out with, even with bad people, you know, with bad friends. And, Almost every day I cried. I was crying. After using drugs, I felt so terrible, so dirty because my children could hear me and it was all this panic and, you know. He worked, but he spent the money. So that's why we didn't have money for rent, money for to buy things in the house, you know, food and everything. So I had depression, I have headaches every time. I couldn't sleep, I had insomnia. I had insomnia too, uh, stress. He was very bad, very bad. He used to, when he was drunk and, and, and you know, high, he used to bother the children, and, you know, like scare them, like he's gonna kill them, but he didn't do nothing bad to them, but they, they probably remember everything. And one day he, he hit me and, and we called the police and he, was, he went to prison, I mean, to jail for like maybe a two days, but he went to jail. Well, not even our children, because we lost our children, but not even them stop, stop us. You lose your peace. You lose, you, uh, we almost lose their, their apartment because we had a eviction notice already. We owed, we owed like three months, I think. There was a, a, a woman talking that she had a pro the same problem that he had on TV and she said that uh, if you want to change your life, you come here. You gave us the, the phone number and he just, he was just laying and I mean sitting down and he told me, come here, we're going there tomorrow. <laughs> and that was it. We came when the pastor came and then opened the door for us. His wife was there. He just started talking to us first. We were the four first people that opened that church in Fulton Street. He was so sure that our lives are going to change, that I see in his, in his face, in his eyes. I love that. I, mean, I, I just said, we're going to do what he said. You've got seven weeks, seven Fridays. You come and you're going to see your life is change. So, my husband said, I'm going to do it. The addiction stopped that day, that same day, even because we smoked cigarettes, that too. I continued 
smoking. Well, I'm not gonna say, but he stopped the same day. Everything we started changing the the same day. I would, I can say he stopped drugs. He stopped everything. Everything on the same day. I would say that's why my son and my daughter love so much Universal Church because they saw the change in in, her, in their father immediately. My husband was the first one receiving the Holy Spirit. After he did, I used, you know, I, I, oh, I see his change immediately. I was looking at him and I, after like maybe uh, six months, I was still said, I started seeing and then started wanting the Holy Spirit because I said, I want to have what he has. I started, you know, seeking more and thinking that, uh, that I, why is I didn't I don't I'm not feeling like him, you know. To have the Holy Spirit, you have to you have to be interested in receiving. I mean, you have to you have to seek with your with your mind, with your heart, but you have to be interested in in in, in saving souls. That day, when uh, Bishop started praying and we uh, were seeking for the Holy Spirit, I started crying and crying and crying and and I couldn't stop. And I feel, I feel just like I wanted to serve you. I, after that prayer, I wanted to be with you and I serve you and then save souls. That was my wish that day. And I started asking God for the Holy Spirit and He finally gave it to me. We are in uh, serving God for 33 years, 33 years and uh, our lives have changed very considerably beautiful. Everything is in place, everything. We trust God, we give every, we, we, we cannot say that we don't pass problems. We had a lot of problems, but we trust God, we trust the God and He had delivered us from uh, all the things. And we are very happy now serving God. And we, uh, we, we see our children happy with their families. Today, I have no more depression, no more stress, no more insomnia, no more headaches. And I am so happy that, I, that we made that decision because that completely changed our lives. My greatest blessing is to have been achieved the Holy Spirit in my life because without Him, I wouldn't be here even. I had a, I had a accidents, even in a car accidents, and God had saved me. Believe me, it, the Holy Spirit is always there for you, and that's our support, our main, main support in life. Did you notice that Carlotta always had a desire to be happy? A family, they, they were already in love for each other. They already want the, the very good for everyone. They want to see everyone's well-being. But for some reason, not for some reason, since the moment the addiction came in, into this family, into this person's life, Carlotta's life, Carlotta's family starts to be completely destroyed. And you know, when you, when you look to your situation and you look what happened in the life of this woman. Sometimes uh, I see people and they are coming to me and they even ask, how could it be? How could this person have their, their life in this case completely transformed? You know, sometimes it's so difficult for people who are going through an addiction, for people who have a family member destroyed by an addiction, it's so difficult for them to understand, to comprehend that it is possible. Although society and even science considers an addiction uh, an incurable disease, and it's so often for you to look around you and day by day, you see more often people being defeated by addictions. The best families, they are falling apart because of addictions and you look to your family or you look to your situation, you just say, it's just another one. It is what it is. But deep inside, 
although looking to all of this and all the destruction that is happening, and especially you who are su who is suffering with an addiction, you know, the world where you are, we have, you have living in, you have been living in, the, the people that you are dealing with every day, you see that this has been an impossible problem to be solved. But deep inside, you, you realize, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to suffer in this way. I, I, I don't believe that this will be a, the end of my life. You know, deep inside, you look at yourself regardless of your religious religion, re regardless of the family you are coming, coming from, regardless the place where you are living, your financial condition. It doesn't matter who you are, you have within you the desire of, of saying, I would like to change. I would like to get rid of this bottle of, of alcohol. I would like to stop in investing, not investing, wasting my money in gambling. You, you, you tell to yourself so often, I don't want to consume these drugs. You see what drugs have been doing with you. You see what drugs, how much they are harming you and your life, and they are hurting those who you love. And you are telling to yourself, I want to put a stop on this. I want to finish this. But unfortunately, until today, this has been bigger than you. I know you look to so many people around you and maybe you never saw a person who with, you know, successfully could put an end to this, to this addiction. You couldn't find someone that, uh, for real, said, I will, I will leave it, I will abandon it, and I will get rid of it. You couldn't find. The only one you could find is this person, Carlotta, that was sharing with you the testimony, because those who you know, they even stop doing something, but they start doing something else. They stop having one addiction and they start having another one. They just replaced one for the other. You see people that sometimes told you, I will stop and for a while you haven't seen them, but then they are they again. And maybe some of them already passed away or they are already dead because they suffered an overdose because they, it caused so, many, so much damage in their body that their body could not resist to such, so much alcohol, so much drugs. The, the body, their physical body couldn't handle with that addiction. And maybe you are looking to yourself, you look to your skin, you look to your physical appearance, your physical condition, you look to your muscles, you look to yourself, and you do not recognize who you see when you are looking at the mirror. You see, you look to yourself and you say, I don't recognize who that person is. You know, you won't change this situation just because you are a good person. You will change this situation if you do what Carlotta did. And I would like to start with this prayer, asking God on your behalf for you to have the strength to change. If it's possible, go and grab a bottle, a bottle of water or a, a cup with water, have it, have it next to you, and in a few minutes, I will be praying on your behalf. When you look at that bottle, when you pick up even the cigarette, you say every time you light it, I need to stop. Don't tell me you don't because you do, because I used to. Every time I lit a cigarette, I said, I need to stop. Even if I didn't say the words out loud, I said it in my mind. But then I went ahead, flicked the lighter, and lit it up. When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace, and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray.
my dear Lord, here it is this person with me. My Lord, asking for help, asking my Lord to be set free from this anguish they have been living with. My Lord, this person whose addiction is taking control and messing everything up, this person whose life is completely destroyed because of this addiction, the moment this addiction came into this person's life, my Lord destroyed everything, absolutely everything, my Lord. This person, as I was saying, looks at the mirror and is not able to recognize who that person is. They, don't, they cannot recognize in whom they become. And so many times this person felt and still feels ashamed of what they became. My Lord, that they abandon their family, abandon their, their children, abandon their spouses, my Lord, because they don't want their family members, their loved ones to feel exactly the, the same. And this person prays with me, my Lord, and sometimes in pain, in pain because the body is he is demanding, is asking for alcohol, is asking my Lord for drugs. Maybe this person is going through a deep void. You know, my Lord, struggling within with a voice that is telling him, go and gamble once again. Now you are going to win. Now you are going to make money. You know, my Lord, maybe this person is there with me praying and the family is in a different room and this person cries. This person is asking for help because, you know, my Lord, this urge to go and gamble, this urge, my Lord, to go, my Lord, this, this inside, this, this thought that is inside of this person's mind saying, go, go because today you are going to win, because today you are going to make money, my Lord, but deep inside this person, knows that they will just lose their money they don't want to do this the family that is there in a different room watching tv having a meal my lord they have been already suffering with all the money that this person has lost with all the money this person has lost in gambling and that's why this person in this room my lord alone but with me here in prayer ask help me help me my lord so in the name of jesus come and help this person my my Lord, who is willing to change, whose desire, my Lord, is to change. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to change, my Lord. But today, this person is coming to the one who is able to transform one's life. As you've done with Carlotta, with her family, my Lord, do the same with this person, my Lord, helping in a way that this person is going to change, is going to get rid of this addiction and all the suffering that came after this addiction. My Lord, sanctify this water, sanctify this water, and in the name of Jesus, use it as a holy element to help this person. My dear friend, drink of this water, and as you are drinking of this water, ask God, set me free, my Lord. Set me free because I don't want to go and gamble. Set me free from this addiction that makes me, this alcohol that makes me a violent person, that, that makes me a, a, the father that I don't want to be. This alcohol that forces me in doing things that I even feel ashamed of myself. 
Tell the Lord, as I drink this water, my God, set me free from this urge of going and buying more drugs. Tell him, my Lord, I have here the money. I have here the condition. I have the money in my wallet. I can go there and I can buy more. But tell the Lord, Lord, I don't want to. I've been living enslaved by, the, by it and I don't want to suffer anymore. So use this water and set me free. And my Lord, I agree with this person's prayer and I determine that wherever this person is, they receive your touch and they are being set free. They are being set free from whatever was causing that problem. Be set free, my dear friend, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at me. Listen. A prayer helps when you are sincere, as I believe that you were. And that's why within you, you have already the hope that things can change. Look to yourself. Take a deep breath and see how you feel at this moment. I'm sure that this urge is already gone. I'm sure that inside of you, there's already, it's possible. It's possible for my life to change, to be changed. It's possible for me to put an end to this addiction. And yes, it is possible, but it's not possible with you there. It's not possible just because you want or you desire, because this, you already have it for a long period of time. It's possible if you do what is written in this book here, and there was a moment that a man was looking to the walls in front of him and he was dismayed, discouraged, and he didn't know how to do it to overcome this problem. And the Lord came upon him and told, be strong and courageous. And this is what God is telling you, you must be strong and courageous. And when I say for you to be strong and courageous, it's not for you to have big muscles and to behave like a superhero. No, when I say for you to be strong and courageous, it's for you to be strong and courageous and say to yourself, I will not buy drugs anymore. I'm not going to drink anymore. I will search for help and God will help me. And yes, the doors of the church are open every single day. You don't need to wait for a special day for you to come and receive a prayer. You can come as you are and whenever you, you want, our doors are open every day. Although we have a special service, the spiritual treatment, it's a meeting that is being held uh, every Sunday. This coming Sunday, we have it, 3 p.m., but no matter what your condition is, no matter what your problem is, no matter what the addiction has done for you, just being there and feeling better and feeling, you know, lighter and this urge of consuming drugs uh, now is gone. It's not enough. It's the first step. Now you need to be strong and courageous to take the step of faith. You know, the same step that you took one day uh, when you went to, ta to take those drugs, start drinking. When you were gambling for the first, the very first time, that same, that same step that you took to start the addiction is the same step that you have to take to get rid of it. But now there's a difference. Now you feel in your body the need of this addiction. Now your mind is being controlled by this addiction. Now you have feelings, now you have emotions, now you, you have symptoms of what your addiction is demanding of you. And that's why I say that you have to be strong and courageous. And this coming Sunday, I want to help you. The doors of our church are open, open every day and all day long. But this coming Sunday, it will be the special service for, for those who are suffering or they have a family member who suffers with an addiction. This coming Sunday, 3 p.m., our headquarters here in Liverpool, 
153 Northumberland Street here in Liverpool, two minutes away from the West Field in front of Liverpool Plaza. If you want to know where the other branches are, you can search uckg.org.au and there you have all the information that you are looking for about our church, about Universal Church. Or you can give us a call to our helpline center. Uh, God bless you all. See you this coming Sunday, 3 p.m. Stay in the faith. This program is brought to you by UCKG.